I had an absolutely fantastic comment on one of my latest videos asking about how the maturity of your aquarium affects macroalgae and why is it that in an immature aquarium people struggle so much to grow their macroalgae and I thought it's brilliant because it highlights on a massive problem that a lot of people, myself included, encounter when you try and grow macroalgae. If you are a regular viewer to my channel, you will know that my fish house has two sides to it. We've got the right hand side system and the left hand side system. And they are running slightly differently due to the age of them. And this actually allows me to really highlight the point that this person was trying to ask about maturation. We can see this fluval shaker is in probably quite poor shape when it comes to most people's expectations of an aquarium. And I agree with them. What it allows us to do is show exactly how an immature tank affects macroalgae. So for some odd reason, people tend to look at macroalgae as something you can add to your aquarium straight away. The immediate time that you set up your aquarium is when you add your macroalgae and this is absolutely incorrect. One of the biggest things that I found when keeping macroalgae is if you add it to an immature tank you're going to have huge problems getting it to grow. Now maturation of an aquarium isn't exactly something which I am able to quantify. I can't tell you when the exact moment is an aquarium becomes mature. But there are some signs to it and I've done that in a video previously so you can go and watch those signs I'll put it in the description and if you don't wait for your tank to mature slightly you're going to have issues getting that macroalgae to grow. Now this system on this side is I would say midway to almost getting mature because things are starting to look great. Um, if you follow me you'll notice how this system is maturing and you will probably agree that we're getting to the other side of it now which is nice but we still have huge issues we've got hair algae growing everywhere and we've probably got diatoms or dinoflagellates I think they're diatoms on everything as well the main crux of it is if you put macroalgae in an immature system one that's still stabilizing one that's still evolving its environment and all of its biology inside of it like all the little organisms all the little copepods and all the bacteria and amphipods and things that makes up a mature system what's going to happen is something like this all of that hair algae brown algae etc is going to go all over your macroalgae you can see here as well we've got detritus build up now that's not necessarily due to lack of flow that could be due to lack of bacteria or lack of organisms which break down this detritus even down to the bristle worms which for some reason everybody is repulsed by and everybody hates they're an important key part of a reef ecosystem. They will break down bits of detritus and leftover food. So you have to wait for that environment and ecosystem to develop before you add your macroalgae. Because otherwise you end up with something like this, where your macroalgae is being overgrown and it won't grow. I mean, macroalgae, although it isn't a plant, you can think of it in the same sort of way. So if you take a plant and cover its leaves in dust and dirt and soil, it's not going to grow because the light is not going to get into that plant and it's not going to be able to photosynthesize and that's exactly the same as what happens to your macroalgae. You can see here on the end of this racemosa we've got a covering of hair algae, we've also got a covering of I think diatoms and that's a major issue in this tank. Now I have got a couple of tanks set up where I'm just kind of ignoring them and doing nothing to them and I was hoping that they would sort themselves out with my intervention. This particular tank hasn't. We've got multiple issues in here. We've got hair algae, we've got dinoflagellates, and we've got all sorts of pest algae growing over the red hair algae that I wanted to grow. The cause of this is it's just too clean in here. For some reason, the ecosystem hasn't matured. I don't know if it's because this wrasse is in here eating all of the bugs and bits and pieces that I want to cultivate, but it hasn't got to where it needs to be. So this is a common scene in a lot of people's aquariums when it comes to adding macroalgae because what will happen is they'll get an issue like this and then they'll add more macroalgae to try and outcompete it and that doesn't work I'm afraid because the diatoms will actually settle on your macroalgae and starve it of light and in some cases starve it of nutrients. So here's the other end of the spectrum. You may remember this tank although I haven't actually recorded it in probably a year or so 
It's been running for about four years now and it's not your typical reef tank. We've got coral gravel mixed in with aquarium sand and gravel so it's not pure coral gravel. We've got a big chunk of ocean rock but it's not live rock and then the rest of it is pretty much just macroalgae. We've also got it running on FX4 which to be honest with you and I'm going to be blatantly honest I haven't cleaned that in about a year but it's really mature it's really stable and to be fair I don't do anything to this tank other than clean the glass I harvest a little bit of macroalgae out here occasionally and also of course I feed the fish I do absolutely nothing I don't even think I've water changed it in a year but look at how stable it is the macroalgae grows perfectly we've got barely any pest algae okay we've got a little bit of hair algae and stuff down here but I think that's just where the detritus is accumulating where there's not enough flow potentially but the rest of it is growing insanely well there's even an anemone in here which has recently split into another large anemone so look no it's not the prettiest award-winning Instagram worthy aquarium you're ever gonna see but it is one of the most stable ecosystems you might get to see. One of the big factors I think to this tank success is this huge dense bush of macroalgae along the bottom here because it gives a massive environment for good things to live including our friend the bristle worm. In and amongst this, you can see all the little bugs and creatures living in there, and they're the ones that keep this whole ecosystem running. It's nice to keep fish, um, but generally I find in a macroalgae tank, fish are disruptive because they eat a lot of the amphipods, copepods, and so on. They don't tend to add anything other than bio load to a macroalgae system. In fact, I think it would be much more preferable if you want a real macroalgae system just to do without the fish completely and have just the environment look after itself but it does highlight how important tank maturation is this is a four-year-old aquarium with a little bit of a thick gravel bed an old canister filter that never gets changed never gets water changed and yet it is growing macroalgae by the fistful and all the fish are amazingly healthy we've even got anemones that are splitting and growing in an insane way so that just shows you the power of a mature system. If we take a look at my other side of my fish room, this side had massive problems up until the last, say, month and a half. I didn't allow it to mature before adding my macroalgae. I made the mistake I'm talking about in this exact video. And I had huge problems with macroalgae not growing. All my tubs here were filled with this algae, brown algae, whether it's diatoms or dinos, I'm not sure. But all my sand beds were covered in it. It was a thick layer over everything. And I had hair algae, which is still present a little bit in this tank. For some reason, this central middle tub is refusing to mature as well as the others. But you can see this one next to it is full of coralline. It's a very strange dynamic in this tub system, but it does allow me to show the sort of stages of maturation. You kind of start with this or worse than this, then you move to something like this where it's semi-clean and maturing. And then if you've got a good colony of coralline, you'll end up like this. I had no growth in these tanks. Literally nothing would grow because the minute I put it in here, it was covered in hair algae and it was covered in detritus and it was covered in just rubbish. And the reason being is it the system itself, whatever you quantify mature as, it couldn't handle all of that filth. And this is six months time after setting the tank up. So you can't rush these things. I get loads of people inquiring about macroalgae asking, how can I put macroalgae in my two week old tank to reduce my nitrates? And the answer to that is don't because your macroalgae is just gonna die. Now this sump, is on with a light on 24 7 the light never goes off and in an immature system which this was it was absolutely filthy covered top to bottom with hair algae now there is a little bit clinging on at the sides here you can still see it but in comparison to how it was there is barely any hair algae in here the main difference is time simply time and water changes of course as you may know I've been doing large and regular water changes on this system to counteract 
the maturation because that's one big thing as well that mackerel he hates is instability and to be fair it doesn't even matter if your system is stable in a negative way let's say you're lacking alkalinity or your magnesium's through the roof or through the floor or whatever even if your salinity is wrong it doesn't tend to matter that much as long as it's stable and i found that in a, in a new system because of how things are maturing and sucking stuff out of the water the system never really matures that quickly and the system never really stays that stable so i've been doing big water changes to counteract that sucking of stuff out of the water and this is the result it's made everything mature although we've got a bit of issue here with the cryptonemia we've still got detritus building up but that is getting there I think the main issue is in an immature system you're more likely to get hair algae you're more likely to get diatoms and dinoflagellates and so on and so forth so the real takeaway is treat your macroalgae more like a coral don't rush in to stick it into your aquarium it's not a magic bullet which you can put into your sump and solve all your problems it has to be treated with as much respect as any other addition to your aquarium because Otherwise, it's just simply not going to grow and you're going to be asking questions why it's not working out for you. And the main reason is your tank's immature and you're probably not looking after it as well as you should be. So thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please leave a like below and also subscribe to my channel. Once again, thanks for watching and happy fish keeping.